We have two new active regions on the sun this week that are from Solar Cycle 25, and the sun continues to bring us some fast solar wind with promise of aurora. Those stories are more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week is giving us more signs of the new solar cycle. As we take a look at our front side sun, you can see that new bright region rotating into Earth view. This is region 2759, and it is a solar cycle 25 sunspot, and it has been flare active. In fact, on the 4th, it fired off a B-class flare. Don't worry, it wasn't any radio blackouts associated with it. But since then, things have kind of died down a little bit. It's fizzling here and there, but we're still keeping our eye on it. On top of that, it has managed to boost the solar flux for amateur radio operators and emergency responders, so should be getting some decent propagation on Earth's day side. Now, on top of all that, we also have had some pockets of fast solar wind uh, coming from these little remnant coronal holes, and they've actually bumped us up to active conditions as sporadically over the past week or so and brought us some decent aurora here and there. But if you weren't able to catch it, no worries. We do have a finger-like coronal hole and a couple other like minor coronal holes are going to be rotating in through the earth strike zone here in about a week so that should give us another chance for aurora we could easily bump back up to active conditions possibly even storm conditions so we'll keep our fingers crossed Switching to your M-flare threat meter, you can see we continue to be really low in the X-ray flux and therefore by proxy our solar flux continues to be low. With the new GO-16 data, we are sitting just above the A-floor. But hey, starting around the second, you can see a few small solar flares. These are from region 2759 as it began to rotate into Earth view. And on the fourth, you can see, wham, we got hit by a little B-class flare. As a matter of fact, there were several of them there. Now, since then, this region has kind of fizzled down a little bit. It's not really actively flaring so much anymore. But hey, it's one of the first sets of, of flares we've seen from these new cycle sunspots. And that's giving us a little hope that activity is definitely beginning to ramp up. Now, on top of that, we are still sitting in the low 70s for solar flux. And this means marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side. And with the, uh, the new region that's also going to be rotating into Earth view here in the next, oh, probably four or five days, these conditions should easily continue over the next week. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see over the past week or so, we've been kind of hovering between quiet and unsettled conditions until about the 30th when, wham, we got hit by a small pocket of fast solar wind and it bumped us up to active conditions. And believe it or not, the active conditions managed to last for about half a day or more. And that allowed us to have some aurora that came down even to mid-latitudes for a short while. Then after that, things kind of calmed down a little bit and aurora retreated back up to high latitudes. And then, believe it or not, on the 4th, wham, we got hit by yet another pocket of fast solar wind, and this bumped us back up to unsettled conditions and then to active conditions, but it didn't last all that long. And since then, things have kind of quieted down and quieted down. We're now back to quiet conditions. And if you happen to miss the aurora that were associated with these little short storms, never fear, we have yet another uh, pocket of fast solar wind that should be coming through with a coronal hole that's rotating into the Earth strike zone in about a week. So you get another chance for some aurora, even down to mid-latitudes, because there's a good chance we'll pump back up to active conditions and maybe even storm conditions. And although we are in solar minimum and the solar storms are pretty mild right now, we're still getting some gorgeous aurora, especially at high latitudes, but sometimes it even dips down into mid-latitudes. So let me show you some of the gorgeous shots from recent solar storms, like these in Norway. We had some gorgeous aurora all over Norway. And it was seen in Denmark. And the aurora was seen in several places in Scotland. And as we begin to go over the Atlantic, it was seen in Iceland. And as we get to the Western Hemisphere, it was seen in Canada. Here's some gorgeous shots from Manitoba. And it was seen in Saskatchewan, multiple places in Saskatchewan. And it was also seen in Alberta. And now for your Leo Meo Geo Orbit Outlook.
As we switch to our low energy particle environment, these are the fluxes that cause charging around the surface of the spacecraft, including charging up the solar arrays that then can cause discharges and other electrical short circuits and performance degradation. You can see in and around GEO, starting around the third, this got these fluxes that are getting injected, especially around the pre-dawn hours. And these fluxes built up just a little bit, and that's because we've been having these mild solar storms that have only been bumping us to active conditions. After about midday on the 3rd, they got flushed and things got pretty pristine. But then, as you can see, right around the 4th, we started building these fluxes again. The injections happened, and now we're beginning to see a nice red ring around GEO. And so you uh, satellite operators, especially around the GEO environment, expect that you might be dealing with uh, surface charging issues over the next couple days. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun pretty much from the side. And when you take a look at the sun in Stereo's view, you can see bright region 2759 there in the north. It's rotating off of the west limb in Stereo's view because it's now rotating into Earth view. And as you can see, it's actually been a little bit flare active. But if you look at the east limb in Stereo's view, you actually see a couple other small bright regions. One of them even fires off a small solar storm before it disappears. And then around the 5th, you can actually see a bright region in the southern hemisphere rotating into Stereo's view. This is yet another a solar cycle 25 active region. Don't know if it's going to be a sunspot, and it's not all that active. But hey, at least for amateur radio operators and emergency responders, this region, as it rotates into Earth view here in the next few days, will continue to keep that solar flux boosted into the low 70s for you so you can enjoy some marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side easily over this next week. Switching to your moon, we are now passing through the first quarter phase on our way to a full moon, with the full moon being on the 8th. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, or maybe even aurora, you're going to have this bright companion again, so you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we aren't anticipating any big solar storms coming our way. We're kind of sitting a little bit in unsettled territory right now. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled conditions with up to about a 20% chance of a minor storm. This is once again from kind of some unsettled solar wind that we're kind of driving through, but it should calm down here over the next few days. At mid latitudes, we're only expecting normal to unsettled conditions with about a 10% chance of active conditions, but really not expecting all that much. So enjoy this quiet, because in a little over a week, we are expecting a finger-like coronal hole to rotate into the Earth's strike zone, and that could be sending us some more fast solar wind, which could easily bump us back up to active conditions, possibly even storm levels, and bring us some more aurora. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is still in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We do have a single bright region on the Earth-facing disk right now. That is region 2759, but it has since fizzled and is no longer considered a sunspot, so we're not expecting any big radio blackouts, and that should make you GPS users very happy. Your GPS reception on Earth's day side should continue to stay pretty top-notch. Now, it is, however, boosting the solar Solar flux, we are managing to stay in the low 70s for solar flux, which means marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side. And along with that other region that's going to be rotating on Earth's side from the sun's far side here in about a week or so, then that should continue to keep those, uh, those solar flux numbers in the 70s for you amateur radio operators and emergency responders. Now also, because we are at solar minimum, the cosmic ray flux is still very high and it's impinging a bit more than it normally should. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are in the marginal range for radiation dose, and this does include prenatal passengers. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is definitely giving us hope for the future. We have a bright region on the Earth-facing disk that's from the new solar cycle, and it has been actively flaring. So it's showing us activity is beginning to pick up. On top of that, we also have a new cycle region on the sun's far side. And as that one rotates into Earth view between those two regions, that should keep that solar flux boosted into the low 70s, which means decent or, well, marginal radio propagation for 
amateur radio operators and emergency responders this week. Now, on top of that, we've had some decent solar storming over the past week or so. It's not lasted all that long, but it has given us a, a, some beautiful aurora in several places in the world. And we have a promise of more. In about a week, we'll have yet another coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone and possibly sending us some more fast wind. So aurora photographers, enjoy this few days of break and then get ready because we'll have yet some more chances for aurora to mid-latitudes. Now finally, you GPS users, well, you know, the solar storming hasn't been all that bad and these new cycle sunspots haven't been boosting the flux too much yet. So GPS reception pretty much everywhere on Earth's day side have been pretty nice. And then on Earth's night side, well, as long as you stay away from aurora and away from those dawn dust terminators, your reception should be top-notch. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.